So welcome to the Fort McMurray 468 Focus. My name is Rolando Inzunza. I'm the Director of Communications for the Fort McMurray 468 First Nation. Today I have Cindy Miller, the Band Manager for the Nation with me. Welcome, Cindy. Thank you. How are you today? I'm doing great, thanks. Good, good. Um, so before COVID-19, um, your nine to five job was as Band Manager. Can you tell me what a typical day is like for you and your team? Well, we take care of program and service delivery for the band. So I oversee a number of different departments, uh, education and training, uh, social uh, development, um, uh, youth, um, let's see what else, reception. And um, yeah, so, so I, I, basically what my role is is to oversee the program service delivery of the nation to ensure that the programs are running as they should uh, following all of the reporting regulations and rules uh, working with indigenous service canada on our uh, funding um, through them all reporting that goes with that and working with uh, various other uh, entities such as christina river enterprises igrc and so forth so a lot of interaction a lot going on and um, I have a nice complement of staff including housing and public works as well. Yeah and mm -hmm. so it doesn't sound like it's ever really a, a nine to five job. No it's not not for me and mm -hmm. uh, nor for my especially my housing and public works uh, staff. Uh, we are on call basically um, you know 365 days a year. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. you know, emergencies arise, things come up. Um, sometimes our programming is done uh, outside of work hours, weekends, evenings. So, um, yeah, we're, we're pretty busy. And in addition to being the band manager, during the last several months, you've also been serving as the, and I might have this wrong, the deputy emergency manager? Uh, Director of Emergency Management, actually, is, is the title. So, okay. um, basically, uh, yeah, I was appointed to this role um, during our current uh, pandemic. Um, I also served in this role during the 2016 wildfire as well. So essentially what that means is I oversee and help uh, facilitate uh, the emergency that's actually taking place, uh, working with uh, external um, companies, um, other organizations and, uh, you know, planning, preparing, uh, working on our pandemic plan, et cetera. Um, I take on that role. Uh, I was appointed by Chief and Council and uh, currently um, take that role on as we speak. So that sounds like another full-time job on top of a more than full-time job to begin with. Yes, yeah, I do both actually concurrently. So a lot of them overlap, um, but uh, there are some other, you know, some other duties and other responsibilities that come with being the DEM, as we call it. Um, short form and uh, yeah it's it's a lot and uh, yeah but we do what we have to do right it's an emergency you got to do it somebody's got to do it somebody's <laughs> got to do it <laughs> are you still the director of emergency management I currently am yes yeah okay yeah we are still in uh, we are start, still in a state of emergency um, yeah. so yes I, I currently still hold that uh, title as well for the nation Right, right. And what types of programs or initiatives were implemented because of COVID-19 in the Fort McMurray flood? Well, we've done a number of initiatives. Um, you know, where do I start? So we've done everything from doing um, hampers, you know, uh, on reserve for members. Um, during the flood, we experienced some other um, hardships in terms of, you know, store closures, accessibility, things of that nature. So um, we did a specific hamper for that. I work with uh, finance on um, the off reserve uh, funding assistance, um, all of that. Uh, you know, we've uh, implemented a number of things. We do elders wellness checks. Uh, we were doing a um, meals um, to our elders and vulnerable. Uh, we were doing that weekly. We've uh, since suspended that for the time being, uh, offering also transportation to grocery stores, you know, there's been a number of different initiatives that we've done throughout the course of this um, emergency situation that we're in. Not only that, but helping to educate our members, making sure that they're getting correct information, um, helping to distribute um, 
PPE as we call it, so masks, hand sanitizer, um, you know, gloves, things of that nature. So all of that uh, comes through me and I coordinate that um, and we do the distributions house to house here on, on reserve. A little bit different situation for the off reserve, but um, yeah, so there's there's been lots happening for sure. But you've also had um, like cultural classes also online that have been available for off reserve and on reserve people as well. Right? So this yeah, we well with the community well being project that we're uh, been operating under, um, working with Amanda Gould. Um, she's helping uh, to facilitate that programming. So a lot of it pre COVID was um, you know hands on. Um, you know, having classes here on reserve at our community center and so forth. Um, now that we've had to shift that to, um, you know, open, I guess, in a different way of doing business now and making sure that things are accessible to our members online and so forth. So we now have online, you know, cultural classes that have been taking place. Um, she ships up the kits, so forth. We've had uh, online cultural classes for our off reserve members as well. So just trying to engage our membership and trying to help through the pandemic as, as best as we can. Have you found any of those programs were so popular or like, uh, you know, really well received that some of them might run even after COVID-19? Well, the cultural classes, that's something that we actually, um, we applied for funding for and received. Um, we're hoping that that will continue over a five-year period. Um, of course, nothing is a guarantee with Indigenous Service Canada. So, you know, we uh, take it as, as, you know, as the funding becomes available, we're always applying for new initiatives, trying to get new opportunities for our members. Uh, with that particular funding, uh, that is something that we're hoping that will continue after um, the whole pandemic. Now, I say after what after looks like, we're not sure, right? Sure. So yeah, we'll just have to deal with it and take it the best way we can at that time and see what we can do to uh, offer those. This is a really important and it's really something that the membership wanted to see and that had been looking for that is, is you know, the cultural components, the traditions, uh, learning them, you know, understanding them, what's the significance behind it. So we've had a various number of individuals come in to uh, you know, deliver different types of uh, programming. So everything from moss bags, what's the meaning behind it, the teachings that go with it, um, you know, regalia wear. We were hoping to, you know, work our way into having a powwow as well for our nation. That's been, you know, obviously put on hold for now, but it's certainly things that we're going to come back to for sure, because the membership wants, it's important to them, it's important to us, and it's important to our future generations as well. There's a lot of great things there that people can get involved in, not only in terms of receiving um, services, but also programs to, to learn and, you know, learn about mm -hmm. the culture and things like that. Where's yeah. the best place for them to go find out information about that stuff? Well, the best place is on our Facebook page. Uh, most people have social media. We also just recently launched our website and thank you to you, Rolando, for helping putting that together for us. It's, you know, it's, it's, again, it's something that the membership really wanted. Uh, we are looking, as you know, of different ways that we can incorporate more information, um, sharing with our members as well, um, getting them information that, you know, only they are privy to those. So that takes a little bit of time to develop. So we are working on that, but those are about the two best places. On reserve, we also, um, the newsletter that we do, do up every couple of weeks, we actually deliver that door to door as well because not everybody has you know access to online and even if you do sometimes you know your service is not very great out here so yeah so we want to make sure everybody has the information so those are ways that we we uh, try to share that information out to the community awesome businesses are starting to open up again um the the province is opening up again you know we're seeing people uh, out camping and mm -hmm. uh, at beaches and things like that. Last month, Chief and Council repealed the uh, several bylaws around COVID-19, the isolation bylaw, curfew, the travel restriction mm -hmm. bylaws. Um, but COVID-19 is absolutely still something on people's minds and still a reality for us, right? We're still oh, telling sure. people to wear masks, to wash their hands, to not touch their face, to... Mm -hmm. 
uh, just keep physically distant, right? And things like that. Yeah. Is there something that, was there something that you think that members need to know? Um, and what would that be? Well, I think members need to know that, you know, this, this is not something that's going to go away overnight. This is going to change all of our lives in many different ways and how we, even how we do business, um, what happens when the band office opens, things like that. Uh, people need to understand that it is still out there. Uh, one of our nation's close proximity, um, you know, had an outbreak. Uh, there was another case that actually one of the other nations on the other side of Fort McMurray just announced that they had a positive case of COVID. So members need to understand that COVID-19 is still out there. It's, it's very much real. It's not about to go away. We need to do what we can to protect ourselves, look out for one another, you know, follow, you know, the guidelines, right? Do the social distancing. We're not telling people you can't interact with people. What we're saying is do it safely and in a proper manner, right? Maintain your distance. If you're going to town, wear a mask, right? There's, there's no shame in, in protect, protecting yourself and your loved ones, not only just for yourself, but you could actually get COVID and not even know that you have COVID. Um, and then you can come home and you go visit your auntie or your grandma or whomever it is to your mother, you know, and they might have uh, their under, you know, underlying health issues and they get sick because of the contact that you had with them. You know, so people need to understand that, that even though you feel fine, there is still a risk there, right? Protect yourselves, wear masks, use the hand sanitizer, gloves if necessary. When I go to town, I, I wear gloves in the store and I wear a mask in the store. And, you know, if there's hand sanitizer, I even sanitize my gloves as I go, you know, clean my cart, things. Those are all, you know, extra measures that we need to take because, we don't know. You don't know who's been touching whatever ahead of you or, you know, coughing, sneezing, you know, you know what they say, mass is not going to protect you 100%. So that's right. Non-medical masks don't protect you 100%. However, if everybody wears a mask, it lessens the risk. So people need to really keep that in mind. Yeah, thanks. And also on our website, we have information about how to properly take a mask on and off and yes. other information. We did a, another video on 468 Focus about uh, COVID-19 with Alberta Health Services. So there's a lot of information there yes. that people can go and find out too. So yeah. absolutely, I agree. Like COVID-19 is still a reality, but it's up to each individual now to make sure that they're doing the right things to protect themselves yes. and their families, right? Well, for sure. I mean, I think we've been, you know, really fortunate so far that our nation hasn't experienced a positive case. Now, what happens in the future? Nobody knows, yeah. right? However, when you get one case on, on a nation, on a reserve, they consider it an outbreak yeah. because the small proximity, you know, to people, um, the closeness, the interaction, uh, the close family ties, and then you have people with so many um, health issues that really could be, you know, detrimental to them have they, you know, get COVID, right? Yeah. So people that have, you know, high blood pressure, diabetes, you know, heart conditions, so forth, there's a whole list of them. They're more susceptible to getting sick. And if they get sick, they may potentially get really sick. And some people do in fact die from, from COVID, you know, that's a reality. So people need to take it serious and do what they can, play your part and protect yourself, protect your family, protect your children. That's, you know, our elders. I mean, you know, it's great. Somebody goes, I, I was just on a conference call. I have a conference call every week with Athabasca Tribal Council. All of the nations participate on that call as well as the Métis. Uh, we have a number of everything from Indigenous Service Canada, Alberta Health Services, and so forth, they're all on that call. Uh, Red Cross, there's a whole complement, you know, and, and one, you know, person that was on that call just said, you know, I stopped by to see an elder, check up on them, and the elder's family ended up testing positive, so then she had to go into isolation for 14 days because 
she just happened to stop by, visit the elder, but it was the elder's extended family that tested positive. So that's how easily you could potentially put yourself in a situation and putting that person at risk more so, right? So people yeah. need to understand that and really take it seriously. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Because it's like you said, it's it's not just you that's at risk, but it's without even knowing you're you're putting a lot of other mm-hmm. people at risk. Oh, for so sure. You need to do your part to make sure you're protecting those people. That's too. right. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. So COVID-19, we really have no idea how long, when things might change with that. Do you have any sense of, of like um, when the band office, like so the band office has been closed for the last, what is it, four or five months now since March? Since right? March, yeah, so since so March it's been closed. Might, things might change in terms of those so, the band office is closed. However, all of our staff have been working remotely. So we're still operating. We're still taking care of housing issues, um, you know, public works. Uh, we have some programming running. Um, we just actually started our summer student program. Um, you know, so there are a number of initiatives that are taking place right now. In terms of the band office, right now, there's been no huge discussion around when the office will reopen. However, people need to understand when the office does reopen, there are going to be measures in place. You know, we, we work in a very, for people that don't, haven't been to the band office, the offices are very small. Um, you know, my office is very small. It's about the same size as everybody else's office, aside from some of our, you know, chief and council's office and so forth. You don't have a six foot distance barrier in those offices. So when we do open, there's going to be a whole new structure with that. People will not be able to just come into the band office as they have in the past, you know, grab a cup of coffee, sit down, have a chat, you know, check up on things, how things are running, asking questions. It's going to be structured very differently. We'll have to have appointments. There'll be only so many people allowed in the building at one time, et cetera, because of the close proximity. So people have to understand, like, the band office is closed, but everybody's still working and everybody's still available as well. Believe me, my phone doesn't stop. <laughs> People need things or need information. They know how to get a hold of somebody, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, I think that's what people have to understand. The band is like the gathering place. Everybody wants to stop by, say hi, you know, check up on things. How's things going? Pick up a bingo card, you know, things like that that's going to be very different when we do open. So when that time comes, we'll roll out the plan to the community so everybody understands how that's going to take place. And it may be a structure such as you'll have to book appointments. You know, we only have one boardroom, um, one person, you know, basically in there with one other employee. You know, it's it's going to be structured very, very differently. But when that time comes, we will definitely share that out to the community. Sure, sure. Okay. Thank you for that. Uh, One last question. You know, the last six months have been trying, right? uh, You know, you hear unprecedented, you hear um, so many kind of words that we've heard over and over again about how challenging the last six months have been in terms of operations, in terms of uh, emotions, in terms of all these other things, right? But you've been working over time for the last six months or or a long time and that is uh, has been five months um what's one accomplishment one work accomplishment or one personal accomplishment that you're really proud of from you and your team i think one thing i'm really proud of just in general is our nation members you know um we've we've really tried to educate send information out there make people aware and, and people, I think, you know, have taken that information and they are being, you know, diligent. And that success of being diligent and, and doing our part reflects on our nation with no current, um, you know, our past positive cases of COVID. So I think, you know, just pulling my team together, getting the information out there, making sure everybody's doing their part. I mean, you know, what more could you ask for? I mean, we've been really fortunate to date, you know, in the future, we don't know yet. Things could change. 
we have isolation units set up here on the nation, right? So we, uh, you know, I was able to work with the government on getting some funding for a couple of those. We borrowed some from Christina River Enterprises. We've set those up, they're ready to go. We also have an urban isolation center in Fort McMurray as well through Athabasca Tribal Council that we have access to. So we've been preparing, getting ready, you know, working with the health center and their team, you know, developing processes, protocols, et cetera. So, you know, I've been really proud of basically what our team, all of us have been able to accomplish and including our nation members throughout this whole entire pandemic. I mean, it's, it's huge and you know, it speaks volumes because look at, we've got two nations that are basically our neighbors, you know, and they've got confirmed cases now. So I think we just continue to share information with our members, you know, let them know it's real, it's out there, take it serious, do your part, get the masks out, get the hand sanitizer, gloves, etc. Keep those rolling, you know, just, just trying to provide and do, everybody just needs to do their part. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you for that. That's, that's uh, I think, a great final message to leave with pe people with. Very mm -hmm. much appreciate it. Cindy, uh, I know you're super busy, so we're not going to keep you much longer today. I wanted okay. to say thank you very much for your time today. And um, again, this has been the 468 Focus. that We've been talking to Cindy Miller, the band manager for the Fort McMurray 468 First Nation, and I'm Rolando. So thanks, everybody. Have a wonderful day. Thanks, Rolando.